Coming up next on the Weekly Word and our Flash at Fire Summit, we look back at the top 10 influential musicians of all time on this Sunday, January 28, 2018. As I said, hello everyone on this Sunday, January 28, 2018. Welcome back to the Weekly Word. I'm Naquan James. Today's segment will be a Flashback Friday segment, which will be uploaded on January 12th. That happened, so I'm trying to um, do the segment now. This is going to be on the top 10 influential musicians of all time. This article will be from LA Weekly. Here it is for you. Setting at number 10, this is Gudo de Rezo. Since they put the reigns of Gudo de Rezo, laid the foundations for Western music. This medieval theorist in the 11th century was the dude responsible for inventing the notation still used today. In other words, without him, we wouldn't have sheet music. Oh, yeah, and you know that mimic do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do? He was that too, Chris Walker. At number 9, we have Robert Johnson. According to folklore, Robert Johnson made a deal with the devil in order to gain mastery of the guitar. Hell, no matter how he got it, the Mississippian has influenced pretty much every rock musician you love. Keith Richards said he was good as the blues can get. Eric Clapton called him the most important blues musician ever lived, and he was considered the greatest guitarist of all time. Supposedly poisoned at the age of 27 and 1938, he never lived to enjoy public recognition nor commercial access. Rebecca the Hads Coats. At number 8 is Bob Dylan raised Robert Zimmerman in Hibbing, Minnesota. Bob Dylan spent a year at the University of Minnesota and joined the Sigma Alpha Mu fraternity. Then he did a bunch of other stuff and nowadays performs at minor league baseball stadiums in medium-sized towns around the country. Ben Westhoff. At number 7 is Wolfgang Adamus Mozart. You know those stupid bummer stickers? Bumper stickers parents put on their cars to brag about their honor student children. While well, Mozart started writing classical compositions at age four, he performed publicly at the Salzburg University a year later. And at seven, he picked up a violin and sight read an entire piece with complete accuracy without having ever had a violin lesson. Wolfgang Amadeus was a true child prodigy, and this is without mentioning you know that he wanted to become one of the most highly regarded classical composers ever, Chris Walker. At number six, Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley didn't like being called a hero, nor, he, nor did he enjoy the King of Rock and Roll moniker. Teased as a child in Tulipo, Mississippi, he became a loner, learning to play the guitar and find inspiration at black gospel music in Memphis's bustling Beale Street blues scene. He became a leading figure in the emerging genre of rock and roll, and eventually, I mean, and rock, and eventually became. The best selling solo artist in the history of popular music, but never fully shook off the shyness of his youth and celebrity, ultimately proving a fatal curse. Rebecca Halfco. At number five is Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong was jazz's first superstar. Scotch Moe's explosive creativity defied conventions of early New Orleans jazz. He was a charismatic showman and dazzling trumpet player who was literally too good for his band. His performances were largely responsible for shifting the focus in the group to the soloist, and he was also quite an innovator when it came to seat. And you came to scat. Perhaps most importantly, his acceptance by the social elite helped popularize jazz across racial and social boundaries. Chris Walker. And at number four, we have Michael Jackson. People made a lot of jokes about Michael Jackson before he died. About the way he spoke, the color of his skin, his fondness for zoo animals and children, the clothes he wore, the woman he married, the names he chose for his kids, his penchant for grabbing his nuts, his sentimental streak his plastic surgeries, and his acting talent, or lack thereof. But when he died, people made fewer of those jokes. Ben Westhoff. At number three, we have the Beatles. Per precursors to the Prefab 4, AK the Monkeys, the Fab 4 for Liverpool started with matching haircuts, but then they began growing their hair out, and that's when shit got real. Before you knew it, there was hair that was much longer than the establishment prefer and the social order began to decay. Next, there was a musical called Hair, and then later once called Hairspray. It all got to be a little much, especially if you weren't into hair. Ben Westhoff. At number two, we have Ludwig van Beethoven. Considered the best composer of all time, Beethoven challenged authority by refusing to accept the cultural 
norms of the day. His soulful, satanist symphonies broke the boundaries of the classical era defined by technical mastery and ushered in a new period, the Romantic era, being decked in soccer for composing masterpieces that endure to this day movies like Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Gabrielle Cannon. And at number one, we have William Hung. Truly great musical talents are often heard. You won't find one every year or even every generation. In fact, whole millennials tend to slip away without one service. No certain talents will come along once in human history, and that's the case of William Hung. He is the greatest musician of all time in any genre because he emphasizes empathizes our highs, our lows, and our struggles to make ourselves heard. He's history's best musician because he speaks for anyone who has ever saw the stage because he's expressed his life complexities better than anyone else. That and because these types of lists are entirely subjective and unaccountable. Ben Westhoff. We'll be right back. The Weekly Word Official has a Patreon. If you support the content on this show, please consider pledging money to the show at www.patreon.com slash weekly word. So after reading through the article and going through it, some of these people I don't even know. Like, let's start with number 10. Number 10 was um, Gudo de Arzario. Arizo. I don't know who that is. Robert Johnson. I don't know who that is. Bob Dylan. I, I recognize his name. Bob Dylan. Number seven was Wolfgang Amirgis Mozart. I don't know who that is. Ellis Presley, of course, I know who, who, who Ellis Presley is. Louis Armstrong, I know who Louis Armstrong is. Michael Jackson, I love Michael Jackson's songs. The Beatles, I recognize the Beatles. I don't remember, I don't recognize Ludwig van Beethoven. Oh, Be oh Beethoven, yeah, Betty Beethoven. And the number one influential musician of all the time that they say is William Hunt. I don't recognize William Hunt. So let's start with the people I do recognize. Uh, Bob Dylan. I recognize his name, but I don't recognize any of his music. Um, he was with some band. You tell me in the comments section down below what band he was a part of. I don't know what band he was a part of. Um, Elvis Presley. Yes, El Elvis, Elvis Presley. Let me see. He did a lot of rock and roll back in the 50s. Um, you know, some of his stuff was censored on, on Network TV because back then at the time, it was very classic age where you could have moved your hips a certain way. If you move your hips a certain way, it would be suggestive that you wanted to do something with somebody else. So a lot of his um, performances that he did on television, like the Ed Sullivan Show, were censored. But... Um, he was one of the greatest musicians of all time. I don't listen to any of his music, but if I was like in, if I was like in an apartment store or something, and I heard that was press music coming out, I'd probably hum to it or sue to it or something like that. Louis Armstrong, another one, one of the greatest performers ever. I don't really listen to his music. That's just not my much of much of my style. Jazz is not really into much of my style. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson. I have a good amount of his songs. Man in the Mirror, Remember the Time, Human Nature, um, She's Out of My Life, um, Thriller, um, Billie Jean, a um, whole bunch of other songs. He was um, I'll Be There, or I Got to Be There, so I like ABC. This man revolutionized music one of the people re revolutionized music he just kept making albums and albums and albums and albums and albums he continued to make stuff even until before he died in 2009 he just kept making stuff kept making stuff kept making stuff he didn't let his illness um stop him apparently he I thought it was an illness. Somebody told me that it wasn't an illness, but let me explain what I'm talking about. His skin started to get lighter and lighter and lighter and almost became like he was so Caucasian. And I thought there was just the type of disease he had inside of him, but somebody would say he bleached his skin. I don't know how true that is, but he he was he was one of the greatest. I still listen to his music. I and gets you through the day. So, 
I, 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 I said like the Beatles. We just did a flashback Friday night a couple weeks ago on the Beatles. Um, some of their songs that I like. I want to hold your hand. And let me see. Try. I'm trying to think of some other songs by the Beatles that I know. I can't think of anything, but once they they were they started in the in the 60s, 1960 to be exact, when they came to the United States, they appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show, and they made millions and millions of dollars. They broke up, I believe, in the mid 70s, um, went and did their own separate things, but they're one of the greatest too. Four teens from the UK started a group, did well, went foreign. Did extremely well. If you see those videos and Ed Sullivan show, those girls are just shaking hands. Oh my god, man. oh my goodness. They are flipping out over these four little boys at the at the at the time. They are flipping out. Beethoven. I don't really listen to Beethoven. Um his music I remember first learning about Beethoven back in fifth grade. And that's all I have to say, because I don't know who William Hung is or any of the people that was was uh, mentioned in this article. There were 20, but I said just do 10 for the sake of time um, for this segment. Um, we'll be right back. Follow The Weekly Word on its Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages at The Weekly Word 17. And new episode information coming up next. But back, uh, program, you know, um, this is the last Flash Night Friday segment of the season. I'm telling you that now because, listen... I am a college student. I cannot continue to make these throwback through Slash Set Friday videos. You know why? Because I have to do a lot of research and I have to edit and put all these little articles into the thing and it takes a long time. Whereas with news segments or positive stuff, all I gotta do is show you a video and tell you what I what I think about it. It doesn't take as long as ed of an editing process to do. So this will be the last one of the season. They will start back up back in no November. Um, for season three, because season three I'm going to push back to November. So season when season three premieres in November, that's when they will that's when they will be up. Until next time, I want you to like, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I want you to follow us social media on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram page, three quarter seventeen. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.